No one likes doing the dishes, but it's got to get done. And about eight months ago, I moved into an apartment with my girlfriend and it's been absolutely amazing. Our apartment has everything that we need, uh, but the only thing it's lacking is a dishwasher. We couldn't buy our own and install it in the apartment, so we needed kind of a stopgap. That's where the subject of this video comes in. A countertop dishwasher made by Hava, the R01. Let's take a look. It actually took my girlfriend and I a long time to actually pony up the cash and buy one of these because they aren't exactly cheap, they won't break the bank necessarily, um, and we aren't extravagant spenders, but at $330 we did definitely feel this purchase. It was kind of our first appliance that we bought together. Um, there are some models you can find on Amazon that would be comparable and would be slightly cheaper, but not by much. Um, we did choose this brand because Hava has a nice standalone website. They offer a one-year warranty, and I would feel comfortable reaching out to their customer support if we ever ran into issues, and I can't necessarily say the same for Amazon. This model is the only model that the company currently makes. The shipping did take a while, and I think it took about a week or about a week and a half to get to us. It came in this big box and was packaged very securely. There were a couple large foam inserts that keep it from shifting around in the box that we actually kept so that we can uh, keep it safe when we're moving. It was raining when our package was delivered, so the inside of the box and the actual dishwasher was a little bit wet. They do say in the product documentation that they test the water inlet before shipping, and so there may be water on the interior. That didn't really affect our experience at all, and it was just kind of a quirk that we noticed. I'd never seen that before. When I first saw the R01, I was struck by how big it is. I measured specifically to see that this would fit between our counter and our countertops, and it does, but just barely. It is just over 29 inches deep, about 17 inches wide, and over 18 inches tall. There's not a good place for us to put this so that we can access the top filling port. It does have to stay pretty close to the edge of our counter so that we can remove the lid and access that water filling port. And speaking of water filling, it's worth noting that this model supports both a tank feature and a water inlet feature, so you can hook it up to your sink and use the pressure from your sink to fill the dishwasher, or just supply it with the water while it runs. Usually I think these dishwashers have either an inlet hose or a tank, not both, which is a cool feature on this model. And we did opt for the tank model because the ones that you have to hook up to your sink require a certain connection that we couldn't hook up with our sink and we didn't want to ask our landlord to make that big of a change, so we just stuck with the tank model. I also think it's kind of unsightly to have the hose running from the back of the dishwasher to the sink. I just don't like the visual clutter and the physical clutter over the sink, um, so that's why we went with the tank model. The tank on the R01 requires five liters of water, which is about the size of one of these bulk cereal container things that I have. It does come with a pitcher, but the pitcher is one and a half liters, so you have to fill it three, more than three times to get all your water into the container, which I don't prefer to do. I'm, I'm a one trip kind of guy. Since the filling port is on the top of dishwasher, you may have to use a smaller pitcher if you're on the shorter side and you need to use like a step stool or something to reach the top. Um, I would recommend the small pitcher for that case, otherwise you'll probably end up spilling that whole, at least I would spend, end up spilling that whole thing of water on myself. In addition to being able to reach the top, you have to get like enough leverage to be able to pour. So it's something to consider if you're on the shorter side or you don't have a lot of cabinet space that would allow you to reach that top filling port. To fill the dishwasher, you do have to keep the machine plugged in and powered on. There is a sensor on the inside that will tell you when the tank is full. And without that sensor, you won't be able to get any kind of indication about when you should stop filling it. Um, it sounds kind of obvious, but it does say on the instructions not to underfill it. I guess is that would like stress the pump or something. So I guess I'd rather be safe than sorry about knowing what the level is. You'll also notice that surrounding the filling port is a bunch of instructions, which is helpful if you have guests or if you just need a reminder about how to use it. There's a lot of different modes. Unfortunately, these are glued on really strong. Like I wouldn't even try to peel these off because it would probably just leave sticker glue all over the place. Um, so they're not exactly aesthetically appealing, but they're helpful. Aesthetically, the R01 reminds me a little bit of Eva from the Disney movie WALL-E. It's got these kind of cozy rounded corners and is shaped a little bit like a trapezoid. I think the glossy white finish with the contrast of the black window on the front is pretty cool. I don't know if they plan to come out with other colorways, but I think an all black model would be pretty sick. That's just kind of the tech 
colorway I usually opt for. But I could imagine other colorways like you know, some pastel colors fitting with other kitchen aesthetics, I think people would appreciate that. On the top of the model, you've got a control panel and it's capacitive touch, which means there's no physical buttons. All you have to do is just tap with your finger and it will sense your touch. These buttons are all very easy to interact with. There's buttons to change the washing mode, to set the runtime, to toggle drying on or off, and a lot more. There's a lot of uh, documentation and settings that you can change. Um, there's different washing speeds, different washing times, different intended uses. One thing to note is that if you've got a baby, there's a preloaded setting um, for washing things that your baby will use to eat and drink, like bottles. And so you can just kind of set that and forget it and it will sanitize your bottles for you. Taking a look at the inside, it's a kind of a light charcoal gray color. There is a blue light on the interior that turns on when you open the door or when you pause in the middle of a load. On the interior, there's a rolling shelf for moving your dishes in and out of the dishwasher. There's also a small notch on the door that the wheels of the tray can sit on, so you don't have to slide the tray in and out every time you want to retrieve something. At first, it would seem like the dishes would tip the whole thing over when they're resting on the door like that. At least our dishes are pretty heavy. That was something that made me nervous, but the setup is very solid. The dishwasher isn't very light. There's a bit of heft to it, and so it has plenty of weight to balance it out. It's pretty sturdy. If you look in the back of the dishwasher, you'll notice a kind of bump on the rear wall, which actually extends down a fair bit into the cavity of the dishwasher where your plates and stuff will be. When you're loading, you'll notice that the preloaded silverware holder only fits on the back of the tray. So if your silverware is long or tall like ours is, you might run into an issue with clearance when your silverware is sticking up straight. It'll hit the back and you'll have to kind of reconfigure how you've loaded your silverware. That's one issue that I have quite frequently and one of my main complaints about the dishwasher. Um, I don't know why that's there, but I feel like they could probably move that somewhere else. It might sound obvious, but the effectiveness of the dishwasher will depend highly on the size of your dishes. Hava advertises it can fit four small plates, four large plates, four bowls, four mugs, a wine glass, and seven each of spoons, forks, and knives. I can't fit any of my mugs where they're supposed to fit on the diagram. Even if they could, I would be concerned about them getting jet exposure, like water getting shot up onto them and washing them. Um, also, my plates must be really large because it's rare that I can fit more than three or four at a time. Um, that is the advertised amount, but if, if, if I'm putting four plates in there, there's no way I'm fitting four small plates and four bowls in there as well. To fit everything in does end up being a little bit of a Tetris puzzle to get everything in and make sure that it's also getting exposure to the actual washing jets. And that exposure is also another big factor. You can't pack things in because the washing power comes from exposure to the jets rotating on the top and bottom. If you're burying dishes, they're just not going to get washed. And I'm used to packing normal dishwashers, which must, must be a lot more forgiving, I guess, with the quantity of water. But this is something to keep in mind when you're loading the RO1. One cool feature about the door is that it has a transparent pane of glass on the front. And this might be a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it, but you can see your dishes being washed through the whole cycle. There are two spinning arms of jets, one on the top and the bottom, like I mentioned, and it looks pretty cool when it's running. Um, there's a kind of kaleidoscope of running water and detergent and the blue light when it's on. Um, the dishwasher does take, speaking of detergent, both solid and liquid detergent. You load, we use liquid, which we load into a little notch in the bottom of the door. And I'm sure you can place solid detergent in the same spot. I opted for liquid because I wasn't sure how the detergent would dissolve once the water was added. Uh, I'm still using my first bottle from when I bought it. I only use like probably less than a tablespoon at a time. Maybe I'll try solid detergent, but since liquid works, probably not. Maybe I never knew how dishwashers worked before I bought this, but it was kind of new information to me that all the dishwasher does for the hour that it operates is essentially run jets of water over the food until it stops and hopefully your dishes are clean when it's done. Um, and speaking of which, the cleaning power or maybe the jet power of the dishwasher is probably one of the weaker points that I found. Um, I've always kind of thought of dishwashers as actually more of dish sanitizers. Um, it will save you the time of having to soap, wash, and dry the dishes. Um, but you will, however, still have to get most of the food off your plates and your cups and all of that before you send them through. I did some kind of stress testing when I first got the model and I wanted to see how much abuse it could take over time and how much food it would remove. 
The results were okay. Um, I loaded it pretty tightly just because I wanted to see how it would turn out. I kind of stacked everything up. As you can see, I loaded up a bowl that we had been eating lasagna out of. Uh, so it had cheese and sauce kind of caked on there without soaking or anything. I just wanted to see what would happen when I threw it in there. There's definitely food on it when it comes out, which is, you can't really sugarcoat that any better than that. I do think you're supposed to remove the food on most dishwashers before you send them through, to be fair to the R01, but, and even when I was working in restaurant kitchens, they would still have you spray down all the dishes till they were basically clean before you send them through, because if you send in the large chunks of food, they'll get stuck in the drain trap like they would in a normal dishwasher like this one. If that happens, you're spraying dirty water back up on your food, which is disgusting and obviously doesn't clean your dishes. Um, so that would be kind of a rude awakening if you're not used to doing that. Um, so there is still an amount of labor that goes into getting your dishes clean. In terms of noise while operating, I thought it was pretty loud when I first ran my test run, but when I actually ran it with the dishes in, I found that it got a lot quieter because the water is bouncing off the dishes instead of the interior. One thing you'll have to watch out for is the outlet hose. I leave it in my sink all the time because otherwise I'll forget to put it in the sink and I'll end up with water all over my floor. So the way it works is there's an outlet hose where the water has to go and it needs to sit in your sink the whole time it's running because during the last probably third of the washing cycle, you'll hear a gurgling noise and then you'll see all the dirty water coming out of the dishwasher and dumping out of the hose into your sink. You can hook this up to your sink outlet so it goes where the gray water from your sink would go, but we didn't have this ability since we're currently renters and we couldn't drill through anything or attach anything to make that connection. You could also do the same with the water supply if you wanna hook your water hose directly to your plumbing and then run it that way, have the inlet come from your plumbing, that also works. This would be a more permanent and probably more aesthetically pleasing way of using the dishwasher uh, and Hava does include an inlet hose in case that's how you'd like to run it. If you're using this in like an RV or something like that, that would be a really cool way of doing it. Another consideration uh, structurally is the vent on the side of the unit. The vents steam during the wash cycle. Um, it's not a consideration for us since we're just in an apartment and the steam just goes into the air. But if you're in a small enclosed area like an RV, that might be something you wanna think about. As a bonus, the dishwasher does come with a fruit basket for washing your fruit, which I have never used. I don't really care about washing my fruit. Um, I basically only care that there's no dirt on them. I don't really care about wax or whatever else. Um, you can do that with this device. There's a produce mode for washing your produce that has a little basket and you can wash it. It's kind of cute. Um, but like I said, we never use that. As far as recommending this product and if it improved my life, I would say I definitely do recommend it and that it has improved my life a little bit. Like I said, there's still a manual part of washing the dishes. I can't just throw them in there and forget about it, but it's not as time or water intensive as it used to be to wash my dishes. And you definitely are saving water by only using the five liters to fill your tank. Uh, that's way less than I would use when I would wash them by hand, which it feels good and will save you a little bit on your water bill. It is nice to be able to just scrape them off, throw them in and forget about it until they're done, and then take them out when they're dry and ready to be put back on the shelf. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. I hope you found the information useful. Regardless of if you're new or if you're returning, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the video, if there's anything I can improve in the future, or if there's anything you really liked, let me know. I always appreciate the positive and negative comments let me know what you thought. If you'd like to check out this product or anything I've reviewed in the past, links are down in the description for you to examine at your leisure. And thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.